get to it. All right. So on the assembly, I'm starting from the back of the airplane. These are the elevators. Um, and um, the instructions rightfully say to use the lowest possible hull in the servo arm and the highest on the um, horn that controls the elevator. That way you get a better resolution. Um, what I do is I have a Spectrum um, uh, servo tester that allows me to nicely center um, my surfaces using the serv uh, Spectrum timing, which is 15, 20 microseconds. So I know that my receiver, when its channels are centered, will be the servo will be in the exact same position. Anyway, you don't have to do that. You can use other, of course, servo testers. But point is at the um, maximum deflection on up elevator, you see the second hole works. If I went one hole further, it would bind against that surface. So uh, elevators, second hole uh, from the top on the servo horn, and uh, that should work. Thanks. So the other thing I usually do is also uh, once the surfaces are installed, I test um, the entire cabling system all the way from where the receiver will connect to the servo there. So in this case, we see that it's working. And so I do, that's, that's part of the regular testing I do just in case there is a connection problem in the fuselage somewhere. Moving on from the rear of the aircraft. Okay, so my model did not have these two air diverters pre-installed. These are important. These um, make sure all the air coming in through the ducts and the cheater hole make it to the fan and uh, or, or doesn't get, you know, it, it, they guide the air into the fan, improving its efficiency. I've already pushed one in there. I'm going to put a little CA here on top. And these, these are a little tricky to figure out how they go in. But this flat piece goes in the back. And this has to, um, this cut out here has to match the uh, roundness of the fan. So you just have to push them in. They actually go in pretty easy. I'm going to put a little CA in. Because these will have to be removed if you're removing the fan. So you want it uh, easy to, uh, to remove in the future. So we're on the wing setup. And this is how I ended up. Let's start with ailerons. I'm on the second hull from the top on the servo arm, top hull on the uh, flight control arm, and also here on flaps. As you see, this is the maximum extension of the servo um, from my servo tester signal second hull. And that should be where this is as far back as the flap goes. So this way you don't burn out the servos. You want to kind of listen for them. So if you remove power, if they spring back, that means there is uh, the the the, uh, the arm is a little too long. It should be there should be no noise from these. So they reach the end of their movement, but they're not pushing to keep the the flap all the way open, right? So you want to have that gate so that way you reduce the possibility of burning them out and also you know they should just stop at the maximum movement to one side all right and so this is the trim we'll go with i still have to work on the gear doors but uh, all looks good okay so a couple initial observations first i hate the rat's nest these wires are way too long they could have been cut you know to where they reach the the nose uh, part um, and so they're all tied up there that's a big job to cut them and recrimp them so I don't think I'm going to do that but I'm going to have this covered with my um, battery tray so we won't see that a um, couple other things the gear um, controller is really not reliable so this thing here is actually two boards that's the gear controller that controls the motors for the JP hobby retracts and then um, underneath is the gear door controller the gear door controller seems to be doing great um, the gear controller is unreliable uh, it sometimes works sometimes it doesn't respond at all 
so um, I'm going to have to replace this. This is not going to work. Um, also, I've noticed the way this is all hooked up is the gear controller takes power from the side. The, the, so this is a two, uh, these are two UBEX basically in one, one box. And I think that's a great solution. Uh, and uh, the right side powers all the servos. The left side, right now, the way this is wired from the factory is only powering the brake system. But the gear motors also take quite a, quite a bit of a current. So, you know, they, when they reach the end points, uh, I've measured it here, they, they uh, consume about 1.5 amps times 3. So I've actually noticed when the gear reaches end points, it lowers the 7.4 voltage to about 6 so not a big issue, but I think it would be a better way to distribute power is to have the left BEC power both the brakes and the gear uh, retraction mechanisms uh, because those are high, pretty high current operations. So I think I'm going to change that. And I basically will be replacing this, uh, this gear controller. I happen to have a uh, JP Hobby um, gear controller I'll use because this one's unreliable. Um, so that's that's one thing. The other thing I noticed is this um, AS150 plug does not have a spark arrestor on it. Maybe with this ESC it's not an issue, we'll see, but uh, this um, should have a spark arrestor on 12S systems because at 44 volts they spark quite a bit on connection. So a uh, couple observations, small fixes, but uh, uh, something worth attending to. This gear issue, um, I don't like it that the gear retract mechanism is consuming power from the same side, from the same BEC, as all the servos and, and all the avionics are powered from. Uh, that, that works, but uh, I don't think that's a good way to distribute power. We do have basically an unused... BEC on the left side here because it's only used when you uh, uh, briefly engage the brakes. This could be used to retract the gear, keep the voltages higher. The gear will retract faster. Uh, so that needs to get changed. All right, everyone. Let's go through the uh, setup that I ended up with the surface throws and CG. Uh, the plane now has had about eight flights, uh, most of them on pavement, about four or five on grass, which uh, you saw the video, it did really well. Okay, so if you don't mind coming in here to zoom in, let's look at how this looks inside the fuselage. So this is how I have my batteries on the tray. And if you look here uh, for the proper CG, it's uh, just in front of this bulkhead. Uh, I ended up with 115 millimeter CG. So the far end of the CG that's in the textbook. So the textbook range is great. I have my avionics batteries in the front. So this all worked out really, really well. Okay, let's look at control surfaces. All right. So I have my trusty measurement in here. And on, so this is how I ended up flying with this, how I liked it in terms of roll rate and sensitivity on the surfaces. On the ailerons, I ended up with about 23 millimeters, uh, almost 25. Okay, now let's look at flaps. And I liked how it behaved. So, half flaps are at 22 Landing. and full flaps are at 50 in millimeters. Okay. Uh, let's look at elevators. Not much needed here, just like the book. So I got 20, 22 about uh, this. And notice the trim uh, for level flight. This is, uh, it's just about, uh, let's say, a little bit over that edge. I, I started with them being flush and I ended up with this, uh, basically the thickness of the foam over the edge. So that's for level flight flaps up. Okay, now one other thing uh, I added here is reflex on the ailerons. So the ailerons, notice, are not exactly flush. They're about half the thickness of the foam above that. Both of them are up. And I did this because 
the plane was getting a little rocky uh, during landings at lower airspeed. So adding a little reflex, just a tad, helped stabilize it. Okay, uh, I think uh, that is it for the setup. Other than that, it works really, really well. And it's been a joy to fly, stressless maiden. Uh, it's been awesome. So again, highly recommend uh, from Banana Hobby, uh, the Aerofoam L39.